We interrupt our programming to bring you the following special report. The Ryan Report. Whatever, Whatever opinion they had ain't gonna change nothing I'm doing. What was the story he told? Because I, I was there. It's time for The Ryan Report. It's like Jay-Z. All eyes on us. On the People Station, V103. This is your Ryan Report right here on the People Station, V103. It's a celebrity Ryan Report. Yeah. So Got to introduce our guest here in a second. Ryan Report brought to you by McDonald's. One dollar every size is back at McDonald's right now. Grab any size coffee, soft drink, or large sweet tea for just one dollar. Always convenient. Always just a dollar. A la carte only. Price and participation may vary. All right, we got some time with Nate Parker. Welcome to the show, man. Man, thanks for having me, thanks brother. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Of course. We're going to talk birth of a nation here in just a second. You know, get ready for the big, big, big debut. Yeah. You know? But let's get... You know, we always say on the show that whatever the entertainment report is, whoever the celebrity guest is, right. they have to be a part of it. Absolutely. You know, they can comment. Uh, if they don't want to comment, yeah. they, don't, they just say, I don't have nothing to say. I don't, I don't but normally they want to comment. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> normally they're going to comment. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about doing a tease. Mm -hmm. There is beef over cookies. Okay. You know, people get, get into beef about different things, but now there's beef over cookies. Okay, here it is. 50 Cent posted this up on his IG yesterday. Red Velvet He's chips. like, yeah, Red Velvet Chips Ahoy cookies. He posts, soon as I'm done training, I'm eating this. Have you tried these? Right? <laughs> the first comment uh -oh. from Jim Jones. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Jim Jones goes straight for 50. You're going to need to train harder. You already dreaming about cookies? Get you some Formula 50 to wash it down, bro. You ain't equipped for this type of action. Wow. Cookie what's, beef. Where's that coming from? So now Jim Jones has all these IG videos of right. him working out. Right. So right. he had this video where he is, you know, doing like a, a, a pull. Yeah. His back is all humped over. People was killing him. Like his form is like he's going to be hurt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now he's trying to challenge 50. Okay. Over cookies. First of all, I don't, I don't like red velvet anything. I don't like the cake. I definitely not gonna try these. That seems like a, a Are lot. Are you a red though. velvet guy, Nate? I am. Uh, Chips Ahoy red velvet. Would you do this? I don't know if that looks appealing to me, but this just looks like preservatives and additives. Yeah, yeah. That looks like a lot. That looks like extra rich too. <laughs> like, yeah. like you take one bite and it's a wrap. This would look like for those. Fifty wants some of these though. Good luck to you, Fifty. I bet your sales will go up though. Okay, now let's move on. To this we go from cookies to candy. Nice. Sweet tooth. Okay, so the Real Housewives of Atlanta is getting ready for the new season. Mm -hmm. You know, Sheree is back. She has her peach back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, during the uh, trailer, you know, they got to get you to watch. Of course. They are saying that uh, Portia is is alleging that Candy and Todd invited her and Shamia back to their house to the sex dungeon. This, oh, boy. Okay. You want to hear it? Yeah, let's hear it. Here you go. You and your husband asked me and Shamia to come back to your house. You are damn lie. We don't have a sex dungeon. Hmm. I listen. I that don't. Okay, I understand. I understand what's going on, but that just don't sound like candy to me. That don't sound like some candy. It doesn't sound like black people to me. Not not at all. Like not at all. Black people have basements, right? We don't have dungeons. We don't have dungeons. We didn't even do Dungeons and Dragons. We don't like out. the word dungeon. Right. So, you know, I don't Unless know. Unless it's dungeon family. Correct. Now, she was saying you invited us over to hang out with Outkast yeah. and, and Big Boy. That's and, believable. And that's different. Right. A sex dungeon. That don't sound right. Good luck, Sh uh, Shamia. Hey. <laughs> we asked Shamia about it when she was in here early. She yeah. didn't want to comment. She didn't want to say nothing. So, there you go. That's those two. Mm. So, we go from candies to cookies to the sweet. Movie deal, yeah. That Nate Parker got for Birth of a Nation. You like yeah. that segue, brother? I love that. that I'm trying, great. man. I'm trying. I'm here all week. We're doing it. <laughs> He's here all week. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. How do you feel? Are you, with the anticipation of all the hype around all of this? Are you going to be the guy that looks at box office receipts on that Monday? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, I, I uh, I'm gonna go somewhere and uh, plug out. You know, unplug from the whole system. Really. Yeah, man, it's uh, you know, at it, the end of the day, with a, especially with a film like this, I just hope people see it, man, and and they they recognize what I believe to be the power in it. That it's something that can get us looking at America in a way that we can be honest about, you know, the trauma that we dealt with back then and how it affects us right now. Yeah. You know, as you know, it's been a tough seventy-two hours in this country. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so it's like uh, I think we do need things that that can help us challenge the way things are and encourage us about how we can deal with things moving forward. Uh, so I'm trying not to think about box office or awards or anything that I just want people to see it and, and, and hope that it has an effect on people. 
So how do you do that? How do you, you know, unplug from that? Because there is so much. You know, it first started off with saying, you know, first they had Little Miss Sunshine, which got $10 million, mm -hmm. which was a, a great movie. Great movie. And then they said, well, you know, uh, Birth of a Nation gets $17.5 million. So the expectations, like, are, are beyond mm -hmm you know anything possible mm. but then how do you how do you not say you want to do well well i wanted to do well of right. course but i really want people to see it and, and behaviors to change you know what i mean mm. it's like uh it's hard to turn on the tv right now and see some of the conditions and not be concerned about where, about where we are and our young people man this is you know this is not turner's the story they said for a lot of years yeah people have been trying to make and haven't been able to so i, I feel blessed that it exists and uh and so you know that i'm not going to say the 17 and a half million didn't uh, help or right. smile a little bit, um, but it just—I think it just speaks to the openness of people uh, ready to have conversations about race in a very real way. Was it difficult to keep your own emotions in check while playing a role like this because of the sensitivity that we're dealing with right now? Like, I would think that to do a role like this right now mm -hmm. would be something that'd be very difficult to disengage from when you're not shooting. Does that make, brother? You're absolutely right because you know so many of the parallels from then we're we're dealing with now. Right. You know, I mean, you look at like uh, you know police brutality. Um, I think it's easy to understand the context when you see that the, the very first police officers were slave patrol. Right, you know what right. I mean? They just went around the plantations rounding us up, making sure we weren't running away, controlling our bodies and our movements. And a lot of that's happening now. Right. You know what I mean? It's right. like we're good in our own neighborhoods, but as soon as we venture out, a lot of the times we're rounded up. That's when we right. you know where I come from. That's how the, the projects work. You know, so uh, I just feel like there's so many parallels that people need to be able to identify with. And I think they'll see those things. Right. Um, but, and a, but on top of all that, I mean, you watch the film. I mean, it's a love story, a story about love, a story about sacrifice. Um, it's a story about resistance. Uh, it's a story about healing. Right. You know, and these are all things I think could be helpful in our community right now. In theaters, October 7th, we have Nate Parker in here. We're talking about Birth of a Nation. Well, you know. When you talk about going into the, that character, were there some parts like we, we've talked to other people and other actors when they say, you know, it was really difficult for one particular scene without giving away parts of the movie? Is it like one thing you was like, OK, I'm going to need a moment? There were a lot of those things. I mean, even before we started shooting, you got to understand, we shot here in Georgia, mm -hmm. shot in Savannah, which was amazing. The people were incredible. Um, you know, there were a couple scenes where, you know, like the crew had a hard time because we were shooting on plantations that really housed slaves. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like when you're dealing with that and you're you're standing on that soil, it affects you. You know what I mean? Um, and there were times there were certain lines in the movie where people would say that, you know, there's this one line in particular where a woman comments on the things that are happening around and it feels like a contemporary line. It yeah. feels like she could be standing outside the studio right mm -hmm. now saying that line. So uh, any times where it hits home like that, uh, it affects you, yeah. and sometimes you need a moment either to plug in or to or to to step away from it after it's done. Sometimes that line between becomes uh, harder to uh, separate. One of the big elements in this film is the element of leadership. Yeah, and I think that with that and the way that it's going to be portrayed. It's something that's beneficial to the things that we are dealing with right now. Because mm -hmm. if you look at things, like everything is cyclical, right? right? It's just the only thing that changes is the setting. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that that's got something to do and that's going to resonate further with the audience when they see it? I think so. I mean, you know, I had the the, the, the benefit of uh, having written the project as right. well. So there were definitely things that I planted in it very specifically, for whether it be from the research or from dramatizing it. So people could recognize the things that we're dealing with then and with the things we're dealing with now. Something you just mentioned is leadership, man. It's yeah. everything in our community. Right. Uh, there's. So, I mean, just even especially in Atlanta, there's so many people having conversations about what we can do to deal with some of the systemic crisis that's happening in America, happening in our country, happening in the state. And uh, and great things are happening. So I think I, I hope when people come out of this, they come out of it with even more encouragement, you know, looking at themselves like, OK, what I'm what I'm doing is working. Or if Nat Turner went through that right. on our behalf, you know what? This is nothing. I yeah. can deal with this. Yeah. I can move forward. You know, so hopefully it encourages people. On, I mean, we're, we're screening this thing in juvenile detention centers, you know, in prisons. We're trying to we're trying to you know screening for law enforcement right you know we want everyone to be able to see the relationships and how those relationships back then you know play themselves out now and not from a standpoint of indictment and, and pointing the finger at each other but just for us to see you know this is this was our reality mm -hmm. and like you said some of those cycles from right. back in the most the darkest ages of this country we're still dealing with right now in 2016 yeah nate park is here we're talking about birth of a nation in theaters October 7th, all right? Um, all right, 727 right now. 727, um, what do you want people to, 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 to say to themselves when they're walking out? What do you want them to feel? Well, I, I, really, I want them to uh, to be encouraged. I want them to ask themselves, you know, how might I deal with uh, systems that are oppressive in America right now in my own environment? 
You know, um, when you look at Nat Turner, you know, he saw a system around him that was oppressing people. And it, it was bigger than everyone. You know what I mean? It's one thing to, to say, oh, yeah, well, the slavery was just about people trying to destroy black people. I think that there was, it was a system that people bought into and that through their cognitive dissonance, they allowed things that, to happen. They didn't challenge them because they say, hey, well, I didn't create this. Right. That's what's happening right now. Yeah. You turn on the TV, you see things, you're like, well, you know, man, well, I didn't create it. All I got to do is just handle minds and handle me. But we're realizing, man, no one's exempt. You know, everyone's suffering. Everyone's being affected by the things that are happening. Um, but, you know, when you walk out of this film, I want people to feel like, oh, man, well, Nat Turner, with the tools he had, fought against those systems. You know, us, I mean, we're, whether you be a journalist, a radio personality, a filmmaker, uh, if we can apply our occupations to the problems that we see, then we can affect systemic change. Awesome. And, you know, as a, as a father of, of four, you know, and, and we talk about this with, and I have a son who's 13. All right. And I have two daughters as well. You know, we watch all the things that are happening in our nation with, with some of the, the violence and the brutality where mm -hmm. you have regular individuals. Sometimes you have people who have a history, but a lot of times it's just the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. What kind of conversations are you having with, with, with your kids about what's going on in the nation? Like, mm -hmm. how does that work? Because I know almost every day my son asks me something mm -hmm. and it has to be, you know, daddy, daddy and mommy can't even get into it because I'm mm -hmm. like, it's some things that you just got to let me get, take care of. Yeah. What are those conversations like? Well, I, well, first, I think you have to have the conversation. And I think that, you're, you know, the young people in your life need to see that you're active. You're taking an active role in dealing with some of the problems. You know, right. like I adopted my nephew uh, when he was you know, 14 and now he's in college now. But uh, I got him just before, you know, the Michael Brown incident. And, you know, he asked me, well, what if I what do I do if right. I get pulled over right. you know, on my bike? You know, and I was like, OK, well, first thing you do is call me. I'll be there in two minutes. And then I was like, well. I don't want you to reach for your phone. So I'm like, okay, well, get off your bike and just put your hands up. Let them know that. And then I'm like, man, I'm traumatizing my nephew. Just just even in yeah. trying even in to have your a conversation with him. Exactly right. right. And this is something a lot of people don't have to deal with at all. You know, so my answer to his question, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to Ferguson. So he got to see me, you know, go there, be on the ground, come back with some answers. We had conversations about what I saw, the things that I saw that were working, the things I saw that weren't working. Just telling him, man, this, yes, this was a crisis, but I saw Crips and Bloods walking together, right. protecting people, protecting houses. Uh, you know, I saw the rise. I felt the sting in my eyes. So it's like him seeing me trying my best to be a part of the solution, I think, has affected him moving forward and what he's studying and how he's studying. You know, you know, he wore his Black Lives Matter Justice for Mike Brown T-shirt to college, you know what I mean, on his first day. To, to really let people know, set his feet, and this is who I am, and this is what I believe. So I think the first conversation is about just having the conversation unapologetically. The worst thing we can do is try to shield them from it. Right. Because if you are a person of certain melanin in this country, you will have an interaction right. yeah. you know, that challenges your freedom or challenges the control of your body. So the more, com and that's male, female, whatever. Right. So the more conversations we can have around it that can prepare them uh, and get them motivated towards systemic change, it's the better for all of us. 731 right now. Hey, we appreciate the time, man. Oh, Absolutely. come on, brother. Yeah. It means everything. Yeah. You know, uh, of course, make sure you check it out. Uh, it is going to be in theaters October 7th. And I know you say you don't anticipate, you're not looking at it, you're going to unplug. Mm -hmm. But based on everything that we've heard and, and seen about it, man, it, it's going to be a rousing success. And hopefully, like you said, we'll cause some conversation. So we appreciate the time so, this man. morning. Thank you, man. It's an honor to be here, brother.